I'm Melissa. I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast helps you understand the chemistry of your everyday life. Okay, Jam, there's so much chemistry involved in today's episode. Good. Good. <laughs> That's good. It is a chemistry <laughs> podcast. So <laughs> It kind of came out of left field, and then it was so chemistry and so easy to find resources, so that was very exciting. Nice. So I was on TikTok. And this video came up where a guy was like, what happens at the dry cleaner? And he told a story about how he took this fancy jacket and it still smelled really bad after he took it to the dry cleaner. Interesting. And I, the rest of the story doesn't really matter, but I was like, <laughs> wait, what does happen at the dry cleaner? Right. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was like, surely it's not just like no liquid at all. Yeah. And something in the back of my brain made me think, I think this is chemistry. I think this is a lot of chemical solvents or something. Right. Something back in here. So then I thought, I need to know what happens at the dry cleaner. Right. And you also thought, like, if only there was a chemist that I knew. And then you're like, wait. Wait. I'm a chemist. It's me. I'm the chemist. Yeah. Hi, it's me. (laughs) I'm the chemist. It's me. Okay. So then I looked into it. And, of course, so chemistry. Yes. And And lots of resources. Okay. I'm very interested. I don't know anything about this. You don't know anything about it at all. No, partly because I'm just not a dry cleaning guy. Like yeah. I'm one of those people who like avoids that and like doesn't yeah. want to have nice clothes and doesn't want to put the work in. Doesn't no, you spend want nice money, clothes that last a long time. But doesn't want clothes that require that level of high maintenance. Yep. Yeah. And doesn't want to spend that kind of money on something regularly, yeah. you know. But this is continuing the theme of like a couple episodes ago, we did something that reminded me of a bit from Seinfeld. Oh, yeah. Again, quite recently, watched an episode where he does a bit about dry cleaning. <laughs> he basically <laughs> says like, I think it's just a scam. I think, I think they're using something <laughs> wet back there. They just don't want us to know. <laughs> something like that. Well, we haven't funny. named this episode yet, but I do have written down in this, are clothes really dry clean only, or is that a scam? Mm. So maybe we could just make that the episode, the name of the episode. Yeah. Is dry clean only a scam? Is dry cleaning actually wet? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that gets us into our first our first little bit of chemistry lesson. Okay. So I think first what I need to do is define what the what some chemistry terms are. Okay. Okay, so in chemistry, we use the word solvent a lot, and we've talked about it on the podcast before, but it's basically anything that dissolves something else in it. Right. So solvent has, uh, when we write it, it has a V. And when we write it on the board, I remember this so clearly from a high school, we wrote S-O-L and then a huge V and then a small E-N-T. And then we wrote solute inside the solvent uh, because the solute gets dissolved in the solvent. Got it. Got it. So solvent dissolves things in it, solute. And a lot of times people are like, oh, chemical solvents. And they mean things other than water. But uh, water is a chemical and it is also a solvent. Right. So that kind of annoys me. But yeah. I see what they mean. So solvents usually is referring to chemical solvents. Right. That are not water or the chemical. Other chemical solvents. Right. Got it. So like. That's sort of just the, the way it ends up being used out in the world. Yes. Is that, mm-hmm. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Now, the next term I'm going to define for you in chemistry is dry. So in chemistry, we often dry our non-water chemical solvents. Okay. And what that means for us is remove the water. Okay. So dry doesn't mean not wet. It means no water specifically. Right. So we have these molecular sieves is what they're called that attract water specifically. Uh They're like these little beads. And you put them in the oven so that all the water like evaporates off them. You basically bake all the water off of them. And then you drop those into your solvent to absorb any water that's hiding in your solvent. So you have perfectly dry solvent. Uh, Interesting. Okay. So dry cleaning apparently is actually just dry, not water chemical solvent cleaning. Got it. So it's dry because they're not using water. It's not dry because nothing is wet. Right. You, so. you know what? It's funny. I'm sure that we'll have some listeners who th- this verbiage we've been using about dry and wet uh-huh. is going to set off in their minds the uh, 
faux argument. This is, I believe, just one of those funny internet things that's not really an actual argument. Okay. About whether or not water is wet. Have you heard about this? No, I have not. It's just one of those things where you realize, like, and, and people get intense about this. They find themselves going down the rabbit hole, having a strong opinion on this very dumb question. Okay, so is the thing that... Is water wet is the, the question. But what's the argument? Like, water gets other things wet, but it's not itself wet or what? Yeah, it really comes down to splitting hairs about what you think the word wet means. Oh, okay. Cause, because people will say water's not wet. That it, That's one of the one of the stances. I'm, I'm making somebody so mad right now. Someone <laughs> listening is so mad. But they're saying water's not wet. Um, it gets things wet. And so... Okay. But my thought... <laughs> It's like, but that wet would just mean that, and especially if we're talking about the chemical mm-hmm. thing, some sort of ratio of presence of water. There's always, there's lots of water everywhere, right? But like. We don't really call it wet. We just say like, it's not a dry solvent. Right. So right. not dry, I guess, does kind of mean yeah. wet. And in this case, it's funny because <laughs> like, but then the question would be other liquids. So you take something that's not water. You pour all over methane. Yep. You pour all over something else. Is that thing not wet just because it's not water? You know. But it's really a splitting hairs about language, not about actual science sometimes, you know? Yeah, well, and in this in science, if you pour something all over something else, as long as there's no water in it, I mean like technically sort of you could say it's dry. Wow. And that's literally what dry cleaning is. Right. But that that there is a liquid. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing that I think gets people riled up is like, listen, all that stuff. I feel neutral about this argument, which is surprising. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's splitting hairs. And also maybe because my life is, is made of balancing between the scientific definition and the life definition. So, so dry, my whole life has been not wet mm-hmm. quote unquote, but then, but then in science, it's like a dry solvent is a liquid that has no water in it. Right, right. So, you know, so maybe they're both right. Here's my opinion when you hear it. I do. <laughs> I think wet is an inherently human word. Mm. And it is because we are only humans, <laughs> most of us that can are listening and talking and whatever else. And that it specifically refers to how things feel. Mm, okay. And not in a scientific way, but it's in a, if you're a human and you touch a thing, you describe it as either wet or dry. And what, and things, whether it's water or not, um, that are all over something, say someone pours something that's not water all over your shirt, mm-hmm. it will feel wet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I agree with that. Like, I think if I spilled dichloromethane all over some paper towels, I'd say that they were wet. Yep. Right. But I will say I just Googled definition of wet and it means covered or saturated with water or another liquid. Or so, liquid. Um, so the dry cleaners are lying, but they're just using the chemical definition of dry. Right. And they're not, I don't think they're inherently trying to deceive to get back on topic. Seems like they Seems are like using Seems like Seinfeld it. was right. Yeah. So they, <laughs> it is a scam and there yeah. is, there is something wet back there. Right. But surely the per- first person to coin it probably wasn't thinking... Yeah, I'm gonna trick everyone and no, and people all think that there's no liquids back here. I mean, that just seems unlikely to that me. That does seem unlikely. Well, maybe maybe the internet people who are fired up about this will be excited because now they know the science definition and the colloquial definition. Yep, yep, and so they're both right. Yep, and I'm sure, <laughs> and I'm sure that that you know the internet, the people on the internet, they're very reasonable, and I think. <laughs> <laughs> they will hear this and they will come to some sort of consensus and agreement about it and put it all behind them because that is what defines us <laughs> as humans. Uh, so anyway, so Seinfeld was right and there is wet stuff. It's chemicals, but they're dry and that there's no water. Okay. This is just the very, that's just lesson number one. So we should probably crack on. Okay, I don't think I have a lot of other things to contribute, <laughs> so I think it'll be okay. So that really answers my first question of what happens at the dry cleaners, sort of. But then it's like, why are they using not water solvents? Right. And do clothes really need that, or is it a scam? Is dry clean only something, a real thing? You know, I just have a lot of questions. So then I was like, what's up with this? Yeah. 
So I found a really helpful video from the American Chemical Society. I'm going to go, I'm going to use that as my outline, but go a little bit more in depth on this. Okay. Okay. So our chemistry lesson number one was the verbiage. Okay. Chemistry lesson number two, clothes are all really just different types of polymers. Okay. Who's surprised by that? I guess I, the only one I'm surprised by is cotton, maybe. Mm, cotton. So the three different types of polymers that make up clothes are synthetic, plant-based, or animal-based. Ah, okay. And um, synthetic is, you know, polyester is a good example, or nylon. Yeah. It's made from man-made fibers from hydrocarbons, and you can go learn all about that in our plastic series. Uh-huh. And so they have these monomers, the molecules. It's a large molecule made up by, of a bunch of molecules. And these monomers are just basically made up usually of carbons and hydrogens. And then plant-based, like cotton and linen, uh-huh. it's cellulose, which is a polymer made up of uh, glucose monomers. Okay, okay. It's, but it's naturally occurring. There's all kinds of polymers occurring in nature. Right, right, right. And then animal-based uh, polymers are wool and silk, for example. They're proteins. So proteins are polymers. They're kind of weird, actually. They um, sort of have two different types of material. You can think of them as a tube where the coating on the outside of the tube is one material and the stuff inside the cube, tube is different. Huh. So I looked up. Um, I was like, this. I feel like there's a candy that's like this. And the candy is called, uh, it's tuberous. Hmm. And I think it's not really an American candy, but it's like, it looks like a sour straw filled up with, with some kind of cream. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I feel like I've seen a version of that. Maybe there's different names for it. Yeah. I feel like I've seen that in like, in the candy stores that have a huge variety, you know, and maybe even some like. Kind of specialty Like the stuff. candy store on the square. Correct. The other thing I thought of is sort of like a nerd rope. You know, the oh, outside of it yeah. is like solid yeah. nerds and the inside is gooey, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So those are kind of your three different uh, types of polymers that make up your clothes. Okay. So chemistry lesson three is return of intermolecular forces. Why some things need to be dry cleaned and some things need to be water cleaned has to do with the way molecules interact with water. Okay. So in the very first episode we ever talked about, we talked about polar and nonpolar molecules. Mm -hmm. A very brief review of that is polar molecules have an uneven distribution of their shared electrons. Right. So they have poles, quote unquote, where part of them are positive and part of them are negative. Okay. And then nonpolar molecules, they evenly share their electrons. So there's no parts that are positive or negative. The- theoretically, they're just all kind of neutral all the way around. Okay. And polar molecules interact well with other polar molecules. And nonpolar molecules interact well with other nonpolar molecules. But polar molecules don't interact very well with nonpolar molecules. Right. So the saying is like dissolves like. Mm-hmm. It's easy for polar things to dissolve other polar things. That's why salt goes really well into water because both are, you know, polar sort of. Got it. Okay. So uh, anyone who's mad because salt is ionic bond, don't come for me. It's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So water is polar and it wants other polar molecules. Okay. Okay. So let's keep that in mind and go back to the type of clothes and see what their polarities are. Okay. So synthetic fibers are made from carbons and hydrogens, which share electrons relatively well. And um, those are not polar, so they don't interact with water well. Okay. They're just carbons and hydrogens mostly. And so if you wash them in your water washing machine, um, they will, the water will interact with it enough to form, you know, to make soap work well with the detergent and Mm -hmm. get the grease and dirt off and it'll wash away anything that's soluble easily in water. And if you're confused about how soap works, go back and listen to that first episode. Mm -hmm. And it, that will clean those clothes and they usually dry pretty quickly. Like my athletic clothes dry really pretty quickly. Right. And almost all artificial or Mm -hmm. wait, it's yeah, synthetic. Synthetic. There we go. I was like, there's a different word I'm trying to I'm reading <laughs> it's not for. Fake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Synthetic dries pretty quickly. Right. It's sometimes like I just got a new shirt and I noticed that I dropped some water on it and it just like beat it up and rolled off kind of. Yep. 
is because it's it's a synthetic fiber. So it's, you know, it's not quickly going to absorb into the material. Right. So then the other one, plant-based, is cotton. Okay. And so these have more than just carbon and hydrogen. There's oxygen and stuff in the in those glucose molecules. Mm-hmm. And so they do interact with water well because they're more polar, polar. So they absorb water quickly. Got it. Got it. Um, and so they'll get saturated. So those may take longer to dry, but they shouldn't have an issue in the in the wash at all. They should be able to interact with water and then dry off just fine. Got it. I will say those can get uh, they can shrink with high temperatures if they're not pre shrunk. But that's not because of the water. That's just because of the temperatures. Got it. So don't use the hot water. Don't use the hot dryer if you're if you have non-synthetic you know plant-based fibers got it okay and then the third one i talked about those tubes right this is the most confusing one and i'm going to need you to use your brain to in visualize this got it okay engaging brain (laughs) okay so the outside tube of like wool or silk fibers the the nerds on the nerd rope the licorice on the tuberous part yep that is is not polar. Okay. So that doesn't interact with water well. Got it. So like when a sheep's wool gets misty wet, that's not going to soak into their fur or their wool. It's Uh not going to soak into your wool sweater. It kind of stays on top. Got it. Have you ever noticed that with wool? Yes, I have. Yeah. I have some cardigans that are, I believe, at least partly wool. Mm -hmm. Like that, but... So that's because that outer edge is not polar. And my shoes are wool. Oh, yeah. Duh. Didn't think about that. Okay. So your shoes are going to be a good example of this. So that yep. because the outer edge is not polar, mm-hmm. they can repel water. Okay. But if you put it in enough water, eventually it will be able to get through and get to that middle part. And the middle part. Mm-hmm. So on our nerds rope example, this is like the gooey candy inside part. That is polar and it does like water Mm. so there's a sort of a tube that's a barrier that keeps our water out or that doesn't interact well with water and then but if it can if the water molecules can penetrate that polymer and get to the middle part of it there it will be soaked up and it will like to stay there because it's not going to want to pass through the barrier again got it okay so when those fibers get wet they stay wet takes a long time for wool to dry Right, right. And it's because it, that water does not want to go through the barrier of nonpolar polymer to get out. Right. It wants to stay in there. It's easier yep. to stay in. So it'll just stay in as long as it makes sense to stay in. Right. Okay. But also there's another layer to this, which is, you know, if you have a nerd rope and you um, stretch it out, the candy sort of starts to fall off and gets mm-hmm. messed up. Mm-hmm. Something similar happens, except it's kind of the opposite um, in your in your animal based fibers, where as the water gets soaked up, that inside tube is getting fatter and fatter, Mm. meaning that the outside coating has to sort of shrink up and get shorter to accommodate for the growing circumference because it's a limited amount of fabric. Okay. so I'm going to switch my analogy here. Okay. If. If you're happy with a nerd rope, when you stretch it out, it, the candy falls off and the outside gets damaged. That's good enough. But did you ever have those um, little finger jail things? Yes, I, yes, yes, yes. Okay. And if you pull them apart, they get skinnier. Yep. But if you push them together, they get fatter. Yes. So that sort of happens. The The tube getting fatter sort of happens to the tube of your um, wool fabric. So okay. As the inside gets wet, it's getting fatter and fatter as it absorbs more and more water. Okay. And so the tube gets shorter and fatter on the outside. Ah, okay. So sometimes when your clothes that are made of those kinds of fabrics get wet and they get to the, like fully soaked and the middle part gets saturated and gets fatter, then the outer part of that thread will shrink up to accommodate for it. And your clothes get misshapen or shrink. Wow. Dang. So that's why wools and silks are often dry clean only. Right. Sometimes they're dry clean recommended, 
And that's because, you you know, now there are like blends where it's wool blended with something else that will sort of help keep the shape. Yeah. Or they have special wool safe fabrics or whatever. Or if you just be sure to reshape it after washing, then, then like stretch it back out, then it should be okay. But others, it it's dry clean only because there's a possibility that it will become shrunken or misshaped. Got it. Got it. Interesting. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So dry clean only... Not fully a scam. Right. But then I was like, well, what happens at the dry cleaner? What do they do? What do these solvents do? How do they actually get our clothes clean? Yeah. So this is this is the part that I my mind was blown. I was like, Okay. Okay. So if you haven't listened to the soap episode, I need you to stop right now and go listen to our very first episode ever about soap. And forgive us for how different we sound and oh, how yeah. uh not used to being out of podcast who were yeah it was wild back yeah. then mm-hmm. it was 2019 i mean it was like three mm-hmm. and a half years ago we we're just kids <laughs> i d- i didn't have a boyfriend much less a husband and jam didn't have any babies that's right now he has two mm-hmm. okay so for those of you who have listened or do have you know whatever here's a very brief overview is the way that soap works is water washes away Things that are polar, but grease and oil and a lot of dirt is not polar. So soap sort of surrounds the molecules of the grease and dirt with um, one side of the soap likes water and the other side of the soap likes oil and dirt. So the oil and dirt side surrounds it and leaves the water liking side on the outside and then the water washes it away. Okay, well, dry cleaning is kind of like the opposite. First, they use a nonpolar solvent to get out all the nonpolar, like dirt and grease, should uh-huh. just wash away with this nonpolar solvent. Uh-huh. And then for anything that wants to dissolve in something polar, they'll use a detergent. So the detergent gets around the polar things. Uh-huh. And then the nonpolar solvent washes it away. So it's like you turn the soap micelle inside out. Ah, interesting. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's crazy. So it really is trying to basically do the same the same thing in the sense that it, it is still trying to tackle both polar and non-polar things. Yes. But separately. Yes. And in the opposite order. Well, yeah, basically with water, the water washes away anything polar and anything non-polar that's left behind. That's like grease stains on your shirt or right. whatever. Right. That's where the detergent should surround those molecules and wash them away. Yeah. But if you have a dry clean only thing and it's a non-polar coating, you wash it in its non-polar situation and then anything that's left behind would be water soluble, but you don't want to get too much water yep. on your wool sweater or whatever. So then you use detergent to get around the water soluble stain and wash it away with the solvent. Right, right. It's wild. That's crazy. Interesting. I know. So that was exciting to me. Um, basically, it's inverse soap. It's like inverse photography, but inverse soap. Like yeah. I, I saw it in the inverse photography light in my mind. You uh-huh, know, when uh-huh. the, <laughs> they do the negatives. I was yes. like, this is like negative soap. Yeah. <laughs> So that's that crazy. was exciting to me that that's what happens at the dry cleaner. Um, so really they're doing the same thing. They have big drums that just instead of water, they use solvent. Yeah. There are other solvents, chemical solvents. That's not water. Yeah. So that's how, that's what happens at the dry cleaner. And so now, like I said, some things, some wool is treated. It's blended with other things. They have like wool safe detergent, things like that. So you don't have to always go to the dry clean. If it says dry clean only, that might be when that's important. But other things might be dry clean recommended. You could probably get away without it. Yeah. The other thing, though, is if you get soaked with water and your animal protein fibers, it could shrink it up or mess it up, like if you're out camping or something. So that's something to keep in mind is your oil should probably be an inner layer and you should probably have a water repellent outer layer. Mm. Um, And then also, last but not least... Uh, sort of a fun fact, if you will, some synthetic fibers dissolve in the solvents that they have the dry clean for. Uh-huh. It's like it breaks up the polymer. Ah. So you probably don't want to dry clean your synthetic fibers. You should not. They can be washed in the water just fine anyway. Interesting. So that's all of my fun facts about dry cleaning. Dang, that's crazy. Isn't different. that so much science? Yeah, it's very different than I, th- than I thought. I don't know what I thought it was going to be, but, you know. It's very different. Yeah. Basically, it's just the water will mess up your clothes. Yeah. So you have to find a way to clean it without water. Yeah. 
The other thing you could do, I have a wool sweater. I don't even know if this is dry clean. I've never looked. I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hand-me-down. But I always wear a shirt under it. So it's kind of like a jacket. So it doesn't yeah. need to be washed very often. Yeah, right. It's like an added layer for warmth. It's right. like, a oh, on the coldest days, I bust this out and I wear it, you know, yes. over my undershirt or whatever. So yeah, I wash it as frequently as a jacket that I wear a lot, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I always, I also do that. Now I want to go look and see if it's dry clean. Yeah, interesting. So that's my, those are our, those are our dry clean fun facts. Do you want to take a stab at sharing these chemistry lessons back with me? Yes, there's a lot of them. Um, so I'm afraid I'm going to forget something. <laughs> that's okay. I'm here to help. I think the way that makes the most sense to me is to kind of go in the order you went in. First, starting about the different types of polymers we, that our clothes are made up of. Mm -hmm. And that unlocked a lot of things because you realize the real difference is not just in how it's made and how abundant it is or cheap or whatever yeah but that it makes a difference in in the the makeup of it in a way that matters to washing it cleaning it so synthetic being um non-polar through and mm -hmm. through yep so nylon polyester cotton being polar mm -hmm. um so meaning works quite well with water yeah absorbs water pretty quick yeah pretty quick and then even on the non-polar side with the synthetic stuff with soap we should be able to yeah get up in there and stuff like that yeah i think the thing with the synthetic you know it might not absorb water very quickly but it can be uh, enough water if it's in enough water the soap will get any of the surface level dirt and grime off right right but i will say sometimes like with my athletic clothes that i really work up a stench sometimes i have to like pre-treat them to make sure right yeah, and so basically it wouldn't really permeate into the fibers of it, but it would get between, Yeah, say, something like that. And then on the animal side, not the plant, so cotton is like kind of the main, main plant one. Mm -hmm. Animal side, like wool and silk and stuff, right, yes. is um, that wool has like this non-polar outer tube. Yep, that doesn't like water. Doesn't like water. And then an inner polar filling, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And that if water does get through that nonpolar layer on the outside uh -huh. and or, and finds the, the polar place on the inside, and then it's kind of happy. And so is the inside. It likes the water. They like each other. Water wants to stay in there. Uh -huh. And so when that does happen with our wool stuff, it gets real wet, doesn't want to dry, and uh, it starts to affect the shape of not only just the garment as a whole, but at the very individual sort of fiber level yes it gets um full and saturated with some water and then mm -hmm. it kind of um does the the finger trap situation yes where it gets thicker and uh -huh. so it shrinks its length yes to accommodate or whatever like the circumference gets bigger so yes. the length gets shorter right so it's a finite amount of material and so if these and who knows how this was all discovered, but I'm sure that there was some early, before they even understood all the science to this, some early mm -hmm. idea of like, okay, certain articles of clothing need to be cleaned a different way. Yeah. They keep kind of getting messed up when we clean them this way. Yep. And so dry cleaners, specifically on the side of like wool stuff mm -hmm. and other fibers like that, are a real benefit because they spray a different non-water kind of solvent on it. I think they soak it in it. I think it gets washed like, Soaked. I think it's washed like in a washing machine, but with wow. solvent instead of, I think based on the animation I saw. That makes so, so much sense. I don't know why I still imagined it being like not submerged. Yes. <laughs> it's like the directly thing. Um, so they submerge it in this other non-polar Mm -hmm. solvent that's not water that's not water so it's dry quote unquote yeah quote unquote dry as they would want us to believe i'm sure it feels <laughs> wet uh if you put your hand in it but and it is able to clean off stuff and dissolve stuff mm -hmm. without um getting into the the inner tube section of the um those fibers because it doesn't want to anyway because the intersection inner area is polar. Yep. And this solvent is nonpolar. Yep. 
And so it does that without getting up in the fibers in a way that messes with their shape. Yep. Just cleans them without that. Exactly. And that is the dry cleaning. The only part you missed is they also will add detergent to the solvent that gets any polar uh, stains out. Right, right. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to know how that works, it's the film negative of how soap works. So go listen to episode one. Right. And it's pretty amazing. I was really excited about that. It's so interesting because I feel like what's funny is in a lot of our clothing, we're actually getting non-polar stains. Yeah, grease it. stains. I get yep. grease stains so bad. Mm-hmm. Er. Yeah. And so it's funny to think about the like, oh, of course the opposite could happen though. Like mm-hmm. on a wool piece, something polar would stain this non-polar, at least the outside of that fiber mm-hmm. is non-polar. And it would... and your non-polar solvent's not taking it away because it's polar. Yeah. Yeah. I also, I wondered about like what, um, like odor molecules from our body, you know, mm-hmm. like things that smell like sulfur or whatever. I, sulfur, I think would be would tend to be polar depending on what it's surrounded by. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, is that what the detergent really does is it gets out the bad smell. Mm. <laughs> so then I wondered about that jacket that he said still smelled bad afterwards. Right. It, did they just not use detergent? They just only use the pol- the polar solvent or right, something. Right. Right. Or maybe so. he had a, uh, maybe the smell, the bad smell was a molecule like soap that it has both polar <laughs> and non-polar. <laughs> and so these two separate stages didn't touch it. It was like... Maybe maybe so. We had a very unique, very resilient smell. I mean, I don't know what else could be not polar. Like, it's polar and not polar. So I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know how. And I think they put the detergent in and then they, just like with soap and water, they put soap and then solve it. So there should, yeah. at all points, you should be able to get that out. Right. So that was the only thing I could think is they didn't do the detergent stage. They only did the non-polar mm-hmm, solvent mm-hmm. stage and they never put soap in basically. Oh yeah, I see. So that was, because so many stains are non-polar. So maybe they, maybe they sneakily get away with that. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. There is another little bit of interesting fact is, you know, a lot of times non-water chemical solvents can be dangerous. Uh And so there are um, some questions about the safety, especially for the workers who are around that dry clean solvent a lot. So Mm. um, I'll probably still not use dry clean, (laughs) but I'm excited to know how it works and why it exists and to go look at my wool sweater. Yeah. And my wallet is glad that I don't need to dry clean a lot. Yeah, definitely. Yep. What about your shoes? Are you just supposed to spot clean them? I think you can get away with spot cleaning. So that's where it's, what's tough is because this is a blend. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Blends are a little bit. I, I know the instructions for these are to wash them in the washing machine. Probably because it's a blend. I did so, have that included. They're yep. treated or blended. Yeah. But then I think, um, I think you air dry. I can't remember. I, these are relatively new. I haven't had to wash them yet, but mm. anyway, I have washed a pair of these in the past, but I can't remember. <laughs> that oh, I wonder if you have to be sure to shape them back if that's part of it. Right, right. That'd be interesting. Maybe so. Great. Well, good job um, telling me back those chemistry lessons. I appreciated your summary. I thought that was good. And I liked this episode. I kind of feel like it, again, got back to some of our roots of like a, a actual chemistry lesson and then applying it to something. Yeah. So that was fun. Yeah. Um, speaking of fun things, is there anything fun from your week you want to share about? Yes, something fun happened in my week that I'd love to share about. It will seem to some as something that is not very fun, but to me <laughs> was, thank you very much. So, you know, around here, you know, around here, we love cast iron. <laughs> around, around these, these Thanks parts, to those fateful episodes. Uh-huh. 100% of the Chemistry for Your Life hosts love cast iron. And exclusively use them. Yep, exactly. No Teflon in our homes. Not a chance. I do have a, one stainless steel pot and an aluminum. Yeah, stainless pot, steel, but and no aluminum coated cookware cookie, yeah. of any kind. So, uh, a friend of ours that most I know was having trouble with their cast iron skillet, and so I was like, "Why don't you drop the cast iron skillet off at the cast iron spa here at my house? <laughs> leave it for a few days, and then pick it up." And so I got to reseason. Um, I, I stripped their pan all the way down, mm-hmm. um, in the, on the oven clean setting and then reseasoned it. And I did about seven layers Cause, yeah. I, cause it's always frustrating. I mean, like 
when you redo it and you've had a lot of layers or whatever, it it's fine to just start off with like one, just two layers like that. But yeah. dang it, keep having hiccups and weird sounds. It's fine. You can just start using obviously with like one or two layers or whatever. Yeah. But when you're if you've used it for a long time and you're used to it, it's like well seasoned stuff, and someone just reset the clock for you. And if you don't know how to season it well, then yeah. having a good barrier. <laughs> yeah, having like a re- like a lot a lot of layers. Yeah. So you can cook on it and you could you could actually sort of undo a layer or two and there's still be a good yeah established and foundation. And did you do a nice lots of thin layers as lots, we know is important? Mm-hmm. Lots of very thin as thin as humanly possible layers nice. of these this polymer. And it was so fun. And what I might do, um we used to do sometimes we also would post things we reference on the oh, yeah. in our fun thing for the week. I have a a picture of the pan bare iron wrapped right, I shipped it uh-huh. and a picture of it seven layers later it's so satisfying I actually have a picture for almost every layer but that's a little bit too granular yeah. I think it's cool to look at the first and the last yeah. one so maybe we'll post those I think you should yeah send it to me and I'll post it Jam showed it to me and I was like ooh that feels good it's just so fun and I was like I love doing this like, I, I was maybe, like do you want to do my cast iron <laughs> <laughs> and I would love to I think the thing is funny is that I bet if I had like a dozen suddenly I'd get annoyed with it yeah but doing like one yeah. at a time like that it's fun. And I now, did you do it on a cold day so that having your oven that hot for that long just heated up your whole house and you could save energy? That would have been awesome. <laughs> we have been having some somewhat moderate weather here. Yeah, and it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit today. Yeah. Kill me. Yeah. Don't yeah. actually, please. I like living. Oh, 73. Oh, the high is supposed to be 80. Are you sure? Listen. I don't I believe sure? you. No. Am I sure? <laughs> no. <laughs> One day sure? this week, it was supposed to be. And for those of you who are non-Fahrenheit, that's in the 25 range, okay? We're roughly, we're in the mid to high 20s here, sadly. What a bummer. I um wish I could have done it that way. I, and it, one thing I did do, though, is I just did, I didn't have to completely strip them, but I did try to take advantage of the fact that my oven's going to be that hot Yeah, a few times. And I did some layers on my cast iron oh, too. Oh, nice. Just because why not? Why not? Not going to hurt at all. Uh, only going to help. And so I did it so that as much cast iron was getting the benefit of the hot oven as possible. I so. did have a sort of, um, I posted this on Instagram, but a silly thing happened where <laughs> it became very apparent to me that my seasoning layer isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good enough for some things, but I scrambled some eggs and it was not pretty. Oh, so. yes, yes. So I probably should pop mine in the oven, but our our oven heats up our whole apartment. Ah, uh, right. So it's just kind of miserable. Well, if you could par with the pan for a couple of days, I would love to do it because it's fun. Not because you don't know how to do it, because you do know how. I do know how. You know what you're doing. But if you wanted to not do it and you wanted it to be done <laughs> for you, I would do it. Set the cast iron spa. Jam's cast iron spa. Mm-hmm. Cute. That's one of those things that is like... Like, unless you're really into the cast iron stuff culture, <laughs> kind of they always be like, what the heck is that? A cast iron spa? That does not sound relaxing. You know? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, what about you? What fun thing did you do, do during your week? Is it less nerdy than mine? Yeah, it's less nerdy. Okay. But you know what? You already know about it, so that's kind of a bummer, but... Oh, yeah. I hate when I already know. <laughs> but I... I so my husband and I are like, our lives are too crazy. We need to rein it in. Uh-huh. And so one of the things we're doing is uh, trying to have like a, a less technology Saturdays. Yes. And so this past Saturday was our first one, and we like planned it all out, and... um. Then I, re- I know Jam and his wife also do that. Yes. So we kind of randomly were like, hey, we texted him up. Hey, are you also uh, doing this? Yeah. And they were about to start a walk and we'd wanted to go on a walk. So we just drove over to their house and we had a no cell phones walk. Yes. And we got donuts and his son picked up so many rocks. Uh-huh. And um, his other son is so small and I got to <laughs> hold him. He looked really cute and he had like a little teddy bear type onesie because it was kind of chilly so that was really cute so we had a really good time it was so peaceful we walked we got donuts we got coffee then we sat at the park for a while and it was just really nice it was just a like sweet little day and i really enjoyed it so um and impromptu like it wasn't planned you know and i had a few of those impromptu hangouts in the last week where it'd be like i'd just call somebody up and be like 
oh, I haven't seen you since November. Do you want to go grab dinner? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that's been nice. Yeah, that's cool. That was very fun. We love doing those days. We love getting to hang out with you guys. We also love just having a day where we've decided ahead of time. Yeah. You know, very low tech. Let ourselves, you know, recharge. No plan. I love waking yeah. up and there's not a plan. It's like you can do anything because yep. my life is so busy, you yeah. know. You got to make room for it. It's really hard. Like I have to get ahead and think, okay, I'm not going to work on that day. Yep. I'm not going to work. So I got to get ahead. Yep. But it is always worth it when I pull it off. Yeah. For sure. And uh, then it made us realize that I'm going to be out of town every weekend in February. So chaos. Yeah. <laughs> But it's so it's kind of like preparing. We're taking a slow period to prepare for the crazy period coming yeah. up. So, right. Awesome. Well, thanks, Jam, for letting us come and hang out with you and for learning about dry cleaning. It was so fun. I really enjoyed it. And thanks to all of our listeners for um, being along for the ride of me getting excited about who knows what chemistry thing every week. And thank you for teaching us and for solving, solve venting the mystery <laughs> no. of what the heck even dry cleaning is and for once and for all settling the internet debate of is water wet um most and i have a lot of ideas for chemistry in everyday life but we want to hear from you so if you have a question or ideas please reach out to us on our website at chem for your life.com that's chem for your life.com to share your thoughts and ideas if you'd like to help us keep our show going and contribute to cover the cost of making it go to patreon.com slash chem for your life or type the link in our show notes to join our super cool community of patrons. If you're not able to do that, you can still help us by subscribing on your favorite podcast app and rating and writing a review on Apple Podcasts. That also helps us to share chemistry with even more people. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jam Robinson. Jam Robinson is our producer, and this episode was made possible by our financial supporters over on Patreon. It means so much to us that you all want to help make chemistry accessible for even more people. Those supporters are Avishai B, Bree M, Brian K, Chris and Claire S, Chelsea B, Derek L, Emerson W, Hunter R, Jacob T, Christina G, Lynn S, Melissa P, Nicole C, Stephen B, Shadow, Suzanne S, Sam N, Stephen B, and Timothy P. Thank you again for everything you do to make chemistry for your life happen. We'd also like to give a special thanks to our viewers who reviewed this episode before it was released. And if you'd like to learn more about today's chemistry lesson, check out the references for the episode in our show notes or on our website. Mm-hmm.